Hello. Uh, thank you for coming to our presentation session. And I'm Sung Ho from Samsung Electronics, and there is also a channel. And today, uh, we will introduce our 64-bit um, uh, kernel bring up on our Samsung TM2 board uh, with the um, V8 architecture uh, Exynos 5433 uh, SOC. Uh, before starting the main subject, I want to introduce ourselves first. And uh, here the channel is the kernel maintainer of the uh, XCON driver, the external connector, and also the Exynos clock, and also the device frequency. And in our Tizen kernel team, Chanu is one of the maintainer of the Tizen kernel. And uh, me, the Sungu, is the kernel maintainer of Exynos DRM uh, driver. And on Tizen kernel team, I'm also the one of the maintainer of Tizen kernel. OK, uh, this is today's agenda. Uh, first, I introduce about the, what is the uh, Samsung TM2 board. And also, I will uh, share some uh, our working on the ARM 64-bit kernel. And after that, uh, Chanu will uh, share more information about what we do and our uh, experience on the, uh, some issues on the, our 64-bit uh, 60, kernel. And then maybe we have some time for uh, Q&A and discussion. Okay, then what is the Samsung TM2? Uh, it's simple, the Tizen Mobile 2, uh, Samsung Tizen Mobile 2. Uh, it is the uh, mobile reference board uh, for Tizen. Uh, it uses the Samsung Exynos 5033 SoC, and the SoC is based on um, V8 architecture, and of course, the, it supports the 64-bit And it's short history of our development uh, on the Tizen Mobile 2. Uh, in early stage, Tizen starts uh, supporting 64-bit uh, on the ARM Juno board. Uh, it's a bit big board, and uh, so not properly uh, working with mobile reference of Tizen. So uh, we started uh, mobile reference board uh, development for, uh, uh, on the September uh, 2014, uh, when the Exynos 5033 uh, SOC is announced. And then, just after that, uh, we started the Tizen support, uh, all the things. And nowadays, uh, on Tizen 3, uh, the TM2 board supports almost all functionalities, uh, just except for modem, uh, because of modem has uh, many proprietary codes, so uh, not yet supported. And uh, it's based on the Tizen Git repository, but uh, we also working on the mainline tree and the uh, first patch uh, posted on the mainline uh, just after uh, we started the development. And the first patch was posted by Chanu, and in these days uh, also the patch for the uh, TM2 uh, TM2 board is also in mainline, not yet merged. But mm. okay, uh, this is uh, information of our Tizen Git repository. Uh, the kernel is based on the uh, version 4.1, and uh, based on the 4.1, uh, there are more than 1,300 patches are applied for the, our Exynos 5033 SOC and TM2 board. And actually, the number is captured by uh, one month ago, so it's almost 1,400 nowadays. And also, uh, more than 250 patches are already posted to mainline. And even more than 100 patches are merged. OK, uh, it's short information of our Exynos 5433 uh, SOC. Uh, maybe uh, its first version uh, 
of the SOC from Samsung uh, supported um, architecture V8. Uh, it's octa core with the Bing Little architecture. And its display uh, has a maximum uh, WQHD and WQXGA. So we have two both types, TM2 and the extended TM2, the TM2E. Uh, and it supports GPU on Mali Midgard. OK, then I need to introduce uh, something about Tizen. I think um, you already know about Tizen project. Uh, it uh, resides in the Linux Foundation. And the Tizen uh, is project for the uh, supporting software platform for uh, multi device category, including mobile, wearable, and TV, and IVI. And in these days, we are starting for the IoT uh, area also. Uh, all the categories of the uh, devices uh, support some range of API set and based on the common API set. Uh, if you <laughs> have more interesting about Tizen, then please check the Tizen web page. Okay, this is a screenshot from TM2 with the Tizen mobile platform. Uh, one is simple menu screen and the other is uh, here map screen uh, and in our corner uh, with arm 64 bit corner shows uh, better performance than arm uh, 32 bit corner of the same uh, architecture uh, more than 20 percent improvement on the uh, CPU benchmark with the dry stone uh, benchmark tool uh, it's almost similar with ARM's reference uh, information. And then what we do for ARM 64-bit kernel really? Uh, okay, first, uh, it's just our information about ARM V8. It, of course, supports uh, 64-bit memory address space, so its memory map is 64-bit. And on the ARM V8, uh, for the uh, firmware control, it supports uh, PSCI interface uh, with this difference. Okay. Uh, first, we support 64-bit memory address mapping. Uh, if we, you are using the uh, recent bootloader, then you don't care about this. But in legacy bootloader, uh, maybe uh, it just send the Sorry to bit address map, so it should be fixed to 64 bit. Uh, in our case, uh, we need to fix. Okay, uh, also we need to fix uh, drivers on the ARM, early ARM architecture to support 64 bit. Mm, many of them already support 64 bit, but some of them uh, has some issues. Uh, for example, the Exynos IOMMU, the CCMM, uh, uh, originally only support 32 bit, 32 bit, but uh, the version 5 of the hardware support the more uh, physical address space. Uh, it's just easily on the hardware side, shifting the all page entry values by 4 bits, so uh, the driver need to be uh, updated for support version 5. Uh, it is already merged to mainline. And the other case, uh, S5 of S5P MFC driver case, it, uh, it is the video codec of Exynos SOC. And maybe the original code was bad, uh, but it has some uh, fixed base offset of the uh, MFC system core, so we need to fix it. And the other thing is, uh, main, I think it's user uh, mistake. Uh, it uses some fixed size uh, pointer casting with 32 bit, so we need to fix it. 
And it's not really a kernel bug. Uh, in early stage of a Arc 64, uh, there was some GCC bug uh, in light shift. So uh, on the for loop of the with the uh, light rotation, uh, the result was not uh, same with our expectation. So we need to fix on the corner side with some workaround code. But I have checked uh, on the these days, and fortunately, it is already fixed from GCC side. OK, and after uh, development, I applied to uh, runtime checkers, Kasan and Ubisan, uh, the sanitizers. Uh, they are originally started from the uh, Google uh, on the user space. And on the corner side, the former uh, Samsung engineer, Andre Liabin, applied to the X86 architecture. And thanks to the uh, Linaro team, it is applied to the uh, ARM64 also. And in Kasan, the corner address sanitizer uh, can detect the out of bounds access and the user to free and the memory address related bugs. And it's one of the examples uh, we can detect with the Kasan. Uh, in the um, kind of initialization uh, array, uh, we need some null element, but uh, it, there was no null element, so it accessed the out of bounds area, so it detects. But fortunately, Connor already have guard area uh, in the array, so the original code was not really have some bad things, but anyway, I fixed it. And the other thing is also uh, use the free detection from Kasan. Uh, the or, uh, original code condition was uh, some typo, so uh, there was some bad access memory. So I need to fix the condition. Okay, the other uh, runtime checker is Ubisan, the undefined behavior sanitizer. Uh, it detects some undefined, undefined behaviors like Sift out of bounds or overflows. Uh, there is some example from the DWMSC. And there was some uh, Sift exponent uh, too large value for the 32 bit type. And I need to fix it, is already merged into mainline. And the other case is also Sift expo exponent. And and the code has wrong offset in their array, so the code is fixed. Uh, this is fixed from our uh, Tizen kernel. And from now, uh, Chanu will uh, introduce more things. So my name is Chanu Chen. I will give a presentation continuously about what we do for I'm 64 bit for CPU cores. The first PSCI, um, version 8 provides the PSCI to support the power management. The PSCI supports the standard and common interface for the power management. In the legacy device driver, we should know the specific and non-standard uh, code depend on the each vendor SOC. It is difficult to support uh, the power management. So if we use the PSCI, it makes the power management support easier than before using the legacy device driver. The PSCI supports the following scenarios, suspend, idle, and CPU half flow, and system shutdown and reset. But PSCI does not support the DVFS, such as CPU and GPU frequency scaling. Also, the PSCI uh, handled the exception level, so the each ARC32 and ARC64-bit architecture has the exception levels. So usually Linux kernel is uh, operating on the exception level one, rich OS. So we sometimes we needed to send uh, some command to the another exception level. So we use the SMC or hypervised command. SMC is the secure monitor call. 
For example, if we want to turn on the secondary CPU, co CPU cores, we should use the SMC. In the legacy device driver, we should handle the SMC core directly. But if we're using the PSCI, there is no any specific. Just we turn, call the CPU on functions, so we can get the uh, turn on the CPU. So I added some example for the suspend with the PSCI. The, in the legacy device drive to support the suspend, we should add some specific function. For example, actions on the bar suspend function. This function includes uh, some uh, different and non-standard. This code depends on the each vendor SOC. But in the PSCI provide some standard function, we just use the, this function without any specific code. It makes the power management support easier than before. And next, uh, I added some CPU half log example with PSCI. The, in the legacy device driver, we should add some specific functions for the SMP operation structure. It means that the each function includes a specific code. It is difficult to support uh, power management, and we need to more time to support it. But PSCI uh, provides the only standard function. This function does not include any specific function. For example, uh, when I was developing the TM2 board with the Exynos 5433, so I tried to turn on the octa cores on the latest kernel. Uh, kernel but, uh, so I just added the device tree node according to the documentation of PSCI. There is no any specific code. Just after kernel booting, I got the successfully all oct octa cores turned on. It is very simple. We can save the many times to support the power management. And next, how can I support the big needle cores? So recently, flagship models has the big needle cores to support the high performance scenario, such as VR, AR, and gaming scenario. But Linux kernel includes only IKS in kernel switch to support the big needle cores scheduling. But in, in kernel switcher does not use all cores at the same time. So we should use the HMP. So HMP is provided by Linano. So if we use the HMP scheduling, so we can use the all cores at the same time. It means that we can support the high performance scenario on the hardware device. But HMP is only supported kernel version 3.10, and HMP is verified on the uh, ARM 32-bit. So in, in our project, I tried to I supported HMP on the kernel version 4.10 and for the ARM64. Um, so I just uh, added some simple tests uh, for the HMP. This uh, Sysbench benchmark created six threads, and uh, I used the ARM DS5 profiling tool. In the first case, without HMP, uh, this, uh, this result show that the performance uh, regression happened due to the CPU contention. CPU contention means that if there is no enough CPU resource, CPU contention happened. But in this case, this hardware has the octa core, and Sysbench only create the sixth thread. It means that uh, the mainline kernel does not support the big needle cores effectively. So. I test, I offline the HMP patches. I try to test again. So I got the, uh, we, there is no any, some uh, CPU contention issue. It means that uh, uh, we can use the all cores at the same time to support the specific scenario. Uh, as I already said, the gaming and VR scenario. And next, this chapter, what are the challenges on TM2? This chapter includes the two, uh, two subjects. The first one, 32-bit process running on 64-bit kernel. So as we know, the 64-bit kernel pro and supported all features for the 32-bit. It means the, this kernel uh, has the low compatibility. But sometimes the issue happens when we use the 32-bit user press on the 64-bit kernel. So, uh, in my project, uh, so uh, I will explain the, these issues and uh, I will explain how to fix it. 
the first personality 30 to be setting. So as I already said, that the 64-bit kernel supports the old features for the 32-bit. But 64-bit kernel provides different information to the user end according to the type of running process, according to 32-bit or 64-bit user process. So sometimes the user process needs to use the, this information provided by kernel, such as uh, this kernel is supported some or supported FP. So I added some example on next page. In this page, the Unity engine on Tizen platform check the whether some mode is supported or not supported. I uh, I tried to execute the cap pro CPU input command on the 64-bit kernel. This result does not include any uh, some features, but 64-bit kernel supports the some features. It means that uh, if we get the same information, we uh, 32-bit user process should use the personal on the bar Linux 32-bit IO control. So I added uh, some test result. So in this case, I used the um, 64-bit kernel and 32-bit user process. So I tried to execute the uname command and cap proxy MPU MPU import. We can, uh, we can show the, this result. But in the same case, I just with tested the with personal on the value 32-bit IO controller. We can get the different result. So when I execute the cap proxy CPU info, this result includes the sum mode. It means that the six, yeah.
Uh, frankly, just I will I have planned to skip the, this page because this is a more detailed knowledge, so I will explain it. So this page includes how to support the sum mode on the 64-bit kernel. If we use the personal underlying 32 I/O control on the 32-bit user process, this kernel check the this I/O control, and so compared on the PSL on the extra a uh, bit. Uh, macros means that the uh, ARC 32 bit CPSR bit. So if we, the 64 bit kernel uh, to support the sub mode, if we uh, 32 bit user process use the uh, personal use 32 bit IO control, the compact uh, PSR T bit is set. So if this, this uh, bit is set, the kernel changes the some instruction to the ARC 64-bit instruction in the corner, right? Yeah, it is the, uh, yeah, corner, uh, Linux corner handled uh, this method for the sum mode, yeah. Okay, so also 64-bit corner has the configure and the compact configuration. When we enabling this configuration, 64-bit uh, corner uh, support almost features for the 32 visual process. But sometimes the issues happen when we developing the TM2 board. So first, uh, if we want to ha handle the 32 bit IO control on the 64 bit corner, we should uh, add the compact on the IOCTL functions. And the 64 bit IO control is handled by unlocked IO control. And next issues, sometimes even if we use the same I/O control on the 32-bit and 64-bit user process, but it is there is the different size I/O control according to the type of user process. So I added some example on the next page. This page just to uh, uh, show the imp patch information, how to fix it. So on the next page, I added some code. The first example, so I added compact IO, compact IO CTL uh, function points to support the 32 bit user process. Also, and next example, uh, if we use the even if we use the same IO control both uh, on both 32 bit and 64 bit, but there is different size, so we should add the we should support the these issues. So we uh, added the new I/O control, but it is the same operation. So next, uh, sometimes the online alignment issue happen, so we should uh, uh, we should fix the this issues aligned pad, uh, yeah method. And next, uh, some sometimes MFL issues when we using the 32 bit user process. So to fix the, this issue, we should use pi offset 64 C flag. So if we use the this, uh, if we use add, uh, if we add the this C flag, the MF uh, on the user process uh, use the MF, so kernel space use the MF 64 functions. So for example, MESA and WAYLAND always this C flag to support the MF issues. And this chapter, I explain the issues required to the discuss on May 9th. Uh, it means that some issues depend on the only 64 bit kernel. Uh, others, other issues depend on the both 32 bit and 64 bit kernel. The first issue, FP SIMD segmentation fault. This uh, problem is still remain on the May 9th. So when I developing the TM2, 
the segmentation fault happen after wake up, after CPU wake up from suspend state. But this fault only happen on the 64 bit kernel plus 32 bit user process, such as UDEV or BSI user process. So I tried to find it. So when we reviewing the auto options, there is no any issues. So auto options, uh, if we use the auto options, toolchain use the FMOV uh, assembly command instead of a move command. The FMOV is the floating point. Uh, FMOV is used for the FP CMD features on the ARM 64 bit. So FMOV is the front point uh, assembly command. Also, FMOV used the specific register. So D register is only used the ARM um, 64 bit. So I uh, I checked the I dumped the, this register of D to try to find the curse of this segmentation. So in the result, on the fair case, I got uh, some. Uh, this result, the right case, the D register has the garbage data on the fair case. So I tried to some code uh, to handle the FPCMD register on the mainline code. So FPCMD thread switch functions handle the FPCMD registers. This function covered the two cases. The first one, the red line, uh, when context switching happen, but there is no any current thread pointer. There is no change about the thread current pointer. This function just keep the D registers data. But on the other side, this function always uh, load data from memory for D register. It means that the, the, uh, the this FIMD, FPCMD segment first port happen on the first case. But this Issues is not everything. Uh, not every time, this issue sometimes happen. It means that uh, this function does not consider the suspend state, uh, suspend to RAM situation. If we when use the 32 bit user process, so just to, in our project to for the temporary solution, we just use the always load data from memory for D register. So I fixed this issue. But for the fundamental solution, we sh uh, FPCMD thread switch should consider the suspend to RAM situation for the 32-bit user process. This issue is not happened on the 64-bit user process. Only depend on the 32-bit user process. And next issue, I'm um, generally timer issue happen on the ARM64 bit. The Linux kernel needs the clock source for time keeping. So Linux kernel use the clock source and scared clock. The clock source is to provide the time, a uh, timeline for the system, and scared clock is used the schedule and time stepping for the of the print K. So ARM um, provide the timer IP. The IP name is ARM um, generic timer or ARM um, architecture timer. So this timer has the two counter, physical counter and virtual counter. You can use both counter. But I'm um, 64 bit kernel recommend to use only virtual counter because the only expose virtual counter to use your VDSO. So when I try to use the virtual counter, I got the, some issues. So I failed to synchronize the time stepping between the CPUs when printing the log. You can, uh, you can show the, some uh, issues. So I tried to uh, find it. So if we want to use the virtual count on the ARM 64-bit kernel, we should initialize the count offset register on the bootloader. If this, this register is not initialized. The, the each core get the different uh, random offset, so we get uh, some pain issues. But in our project, we just uh, the we we does not use the BDSO, so we just uh, use the physical counter. 
But in the main name corner, uh, we can use the physical counter because some patches remove the physical counter usage. So just uh, we need to add some code. So yeah. Just maybe another case, another on the hardware. Uh, this issue may be bit, yeah. Okay. And next, in the main name corner has deadlock uh, issues between regime map and common clock framework. When we use the regime map subsystem and the clock prepare functions, the deadlock is happen. This issue is still remain on the main line. So I added some example. Samsung S2 MPS MFD device. So the MFD device includes the PMIC device and clock device. PMIC and clock device share those one I scale C line. But PMIC and clock device use the different clock, different clocks. The first, the first on CPU zero, PMIC device rock the regime I mutex A to write to the I scale C first. And uh, uh, context switch happened on CPU one. I'm sorry. On CPU one, clock device uh, called the clock preparer. But clock prepare used the only one global clock in the common clock framework. And uh, on, on clock device, Rock the mutex A to write the ISQS bus, but this mutex is already rocked because the two devices shared one line, one ISQS line. And context switch happened on CPU zero, rock the mutex B of the clock prepare because the clock prepare used the only one global lock. So the, the dead lock issue happened. So fix the, this dead lock issues, we just use the Clock prepare should be on prop time, and the on runtime time we should use the clock enable function to handle the clocks, because clock enable function use the spinner instead of the mutex. But following two fetches the was were posted to fix this issue on the main line, but it is not a, a fundamental solution, just temporary. On the uh, I tried to check the on regime side. The regime map subsystem has the three device MMIO, ISQLC, SPI. The on the ISQLC, uh, regime map MMIO driver use the only spin knock for the speed. The regime map ISQLC and SPI driver use the UTS for the racking system. If we use the just the regime map MMIO, uh, if we use the regime map MMIO, there is no any issues. So if we change the change the rocking mechanism to the spin knock, there is no any issue. But also, it is not a fundamental solution. So as I already said, that, uh, just we use the spin knock, it is not a fundamental solution to fix the, this dead rock. Because there are many similar cases on the latest corner, uh, on the main line corner. So we need to rocking ideas. So these patches were posted by a mailing list some, day, some weeks ago. This, uh, this patch has the new rocking idea. So as I already said, that the common clock, uh, clock prepare function, only one global clock. But this, pa this uh, patch is uh, patches, the new rocking idea. Use the, uh, uh, sorry, uh, each clock controller use the own mutex rock instead of global lock. So after, if, uh, after applying these patches, Maybe this issue will be fixed. Well, next, some there is dependence between power domain and common clock framework. Uh, when I was developing the TM2 board, graphics hardware mode does not working after uh, CPU wake up from suspend trap. Uh, suspend trap. It means it. The reason is that graphics related uh, clocks are initialized after wake up from the suspend state, but Common clock framework already supports the handling for the suspend trap to save, restore, and clock register. But uh, common clock framework does not uh, prevent, prevent this issue because 
Sometimes the hardware is the clock domain is belonging to the power domain. So uh, already some device, we, we can register device to the power domain as a child device, but the in the main line, common color flamer does not support the runtime pin. So it means that we, the clock controller is not able to make the dependency with the power domain. So this uh, diagram shows the clock hierarchy in the action of 5433. So as I said, that the, some child clock controller, if uh, child clock controller belonging to the power domain, the clock controller should handle the clocks when power domain state is changed. The other side, the power domain state is changed, the child clock controller should know the this changes the state. So in our case, for the temporary solution, we use the <coughs> notifier chain, but it is just temporary solution. So how to fix the issue? The clock common, claim, common framework should support the runtime PM interface for the power domain. So the Marek is in our team members to develop the TM2. He posted the following patches to fix the, these issues. After offline these patches, maybe this issue will be fixed. And uh, the ARM 64-bit kernel does not support the decompression features, so we can not use the G image. But if we want to use the compressed image, we can use the decompression features of U-boot bootloader. So in, our, in my project, we use the Decompress features of U-boot bootloader. Yeah, so just I explained some more issues. So this page includes some issues for to support the TM2 on the main line. So I tried to uh, post the patches for the Action 5433 and TM2. Also, you can check the old uh, history and patches of uh, TM2 on the Tizen Git repository. So I will, uh, I prepared uh, some short demonstration for the TM2 with uh, Taijian. This is just uh, the handling the TM2 board. It shows some uh, our schedule pace. And this is our uh, presentation. And then uh, it's uh, WebGL samples with aquarium. Uh, 40 fishes uh, with uh, 40 or between 40 to uh, 50 FPS and 4,000. Uh, it's not showing where, but yeah, it's seven or eight frame. And then it's last year's uh, ERC YouTube from the, our team, and it shows with the hardware video code. And the last item is uh, showing a uh, pass from Tegar Airport to Maritime Hotel from the Google Maps. 
Okay, <laughs> it's finished it or demo. Uh, the Exynos 5433 has the Mali Midgard uh, GPU, and we use uh, Mali user binaries. Okay, thank you for uh, listening our presentation, and if you have any question, then please let me know. Any questions or any discussion point? Actually, the TM board is sending to Korean university for uh, researching support, but uh, there is no plan for sending board to other. Maybe uh, you can contact our OSG group for uh, getting more devices. Any other question? Uh, okay, it seems no question. And ah, okay. <laughs> About the uh, best, you mean that the about best way about the PSTI? Yeah, yeah. Uh, for hacking. So yeah, the PSCI is, um, as I already say, that the, it is the supports the standard interface. So frankly, if some SOC supports the fully PSCI, the latest gonna provide the PSCI three versions, 4.1, 4.2, 1 1.0. If the each SOC supports the fully 1.0, there is the simple to support power management. So frankly, Actions 5433 does not fully support the PSCI. So example, when I, as I already said, that the, I tried to turn on the octa core. This SOC fully supports the two uh, for the CPU half load. But uh, when I tried to support the suspend frame for the Actions 5433, but this uh, SOC, uh, even if uh, SOC supports the PSCI, there is no any specific code to support the power management. So if uh, just I think that the, the some architecture, the hardware architecture uh, supports the fully PSCI, some I think that we should uh, save the many times for the power management. Okay, time is already finished, so we are still here, so if you have any other discussion point, please let us know during the conference. Thank you uh, for listening our presentation. <laughs>